Hey guys, this is Mike, and you're listening to Feeling Twisty. I'm really glad you're here. Earlier today, I got a text from an old friend of mine, a good friend of mine. We've been, shoot, we used to run the roads together way back in the, well, it's been a long time, back in high school and after. My good buddy, Mark, I got a text, and he said, the gist of it is, Mike, I've been listening to your podcast and I don't know what in the world you're talking about. <laughs> so I thought I would do this uh, episode inspired by Mark. I'm trying to make this as simple and easy to understand the basic principles from the way I see it and the way I experience it. And, and I'm talking about what Neville Goddard calls, calls the law. You know, getting and being the things, the person you want to be, having the life you really want. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take uh, a verse, one of my, well, one of my favorite verses. I every it seems like I have a new favorite one all the time, but I mentioned this one the other day. And I think this one says it very clearly. I'm going to read it. It's Mark 11:24. <clears throat> For this reason, I say to you, be believing that you received all that you were praying and asking, and it will happen for you. I'll read it again. For this reason, I say to you, be believing that you received all that you were praying and asking, and it will happen. You notice the tense there's a there's difference in uh, the tense three times in those uh, in that verse. Be believing. It's an ongoing, constant, current, always in the now, present belief that you received it. Past tense, and it will happen. So to to actually have it happen in your physical world, you first have to be dwelling in this belief. Be believing, ongoing, ongoing, current, now, that you've already received it, whatever it is you want. And I've mentioned this before, the word prayer, when it says you know, all that you're praying and asking, prayer is, uh, in the concordance, it's broken down, it says it's two Greek words that make up this word, pray. And the first word, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to pronounce it. I, I don't speak Greek, but phonetically, according to the pronunciation guide, the first word is pros or pros. And it's a preposition of direction. Forward to, motion towards, accession to. And eukomahi, <laughs> I don't think I pronounced that right, is the second word. And it means to wish. So when you pray, you're moving in mind because that's where you're praying. Whether you're praying silently or outwardly with your mouth, you're still doing it within your own mind. So you're moving toward your wish. There's a movement in your mind, in imagination, to your wish fulfilled. And this verse says simply that whatever you're asking for, whatever it is you're praying for, Whatever it is you're moving within, into, be believing. Continually believe that you have received it and it will happen for you. I've said this before that this really breaks down what Neville calls the law. Uh, what I grew up in for some of my years in, in one of the churches during the whole, you know, name it and claim it movement. That was kind of the fad thing to do. And, uh, well, that's really the truth, though. You, you can name it and claim it, but you have to, the part that they always left out, at least when I was attending that church, you, yes, name what it, is, what it is you want and claim it. You received it, but they didn't really focus a lot on 
continuing this ongoing belief, this knowing that you are already experiencing that, that you have already received it. And I think from my own experience that the key to this, to have this ongoing present tense now belief that I have already received it, that I'm already being it, is my mental diet. Neville refers to mental diet or inner conversations. The Bible talks about it a lot. Proverbs, uh, what, 4.23? There's a the verse that talks about guard your mind. In some translations, it says heart, but it's referring to your, your mind, your thoughts and feelings. Guard what's going on inside you because out of that is what you experience in life. And it's all over the Bible. If you grew up with the Bible like me, you look back at these verses and see it's telling you this all the time. Whatever you, What's going on inside you is what you experience. So I'm going to uh, read a couple of quotes from a lecture. It's back, it's, I've seen it a couple of different titles of Neville Goddard's. It's from 1955. Uh, I've seen it uh, titled Mental Diet. I've also seen it uh, called self-talk and then self-talk creates uh, or self-talk imagining creates your reality. I've seen several different versions, at least in the title. So anyway, I'll put a link at, in the description for this, uh, this lecture if you're interested. I suggest you read it. It's a great one. So mental diet. So here's a few quotes from Neville's lecture. As we control our inner talking, matching it to our fulfilled desires, we can lay aside all other processes. I love that, you know, because if you move within and you know you are believing it, you feel it, ah, I've got it, yes. You don't need to worry about doing affirmations or doing other techniques because you've already done it. You've already moved within into that new state, that new state of being where your wish is fulfilled, that it's done. You don't need to worry about doing anything else. You've done it. The only thing else to do is to continue believing. Be believing that you've already received it. Okay, here's another quote. Imagine your wish fulfilled and carry on mental conversations from that premise. So if whatever it is you're praying for or imagining that you are now, what it, if whatever your wish is, is fulfilled, what is your mental conversation? What are your thoughts? What are you saying to people in your mind? What are you thinking about people, thinking about yourself? Mental diet, mental conversations is not a technique that you do a couple times a day. It's who you are. Your mental conversations is the indicator, a great indicator of what state you're dwelling in, who you are being. Are you uh, continuing? Are you being the old man with the old conversations, the doubt and the worry and the bitterness? If you are, think for a moment, if whatever it is you want to be, want to experience, if at this moment, right now, not tomorrow, not in a year, but right now, you are already experiencing that, this new way of life, you're already wealthy, you're already healthy, You're already that. How would you feel right now? And let that answer come up from within you. Even if you're sick today, some chronic thing, some supposedly permanent condition, how would you feel right now within you? How would you feel if you were the healthy person that you want to be? Okay, 
So what is your mental conversation? What are you thinking and feeling habitually from that new state, that new premise that you are this wealthy businessman or successful salesperson? That's where the key is to success, I think, in actually experiencing in the physical world what we want in our minds, what we've moved in imagination or what we've prayed for. Neville also says in that lecture, the right inner speech is the speech that would be yours were you to realize your ideal. It's like the other quote. Whatever you, whoever it is you want to be or experience and ask yourself, how would I feel if I were that now? And that feeling, that response is the movement in mind, the movement in imagination, or if you prefer, it's the prayer. It's the successful prayer. You've done it. You, there was the motion toward. You're now in this new state. Because like the verse in Proverbs says, whatever's going on in your mind is what you experience outside of your, what seems to be outside of your body. So from that new perspective, how do you see the world? How do you treat your wife? How do you treat your boss? Check your Facebook feed. And what are you posting? You posting, you know, the old junk still, still complaining about the government or taxes or anything. That's a good indicator. You can just look back, look at your current feed. What, what are you still posting and liking on Facebook and Instagram? Has anything changed? That's part of the mental diet, I think. If we haven't really done it, then we notice there's no real change in our habitual thinking and conversation with ourself. And it's cool if you, you know, after you've done it, but you have negative thoughts that seem to contradict what you've prayed for, what you've moved within mind for, this new state of being. Don't fight it. Don't go to war with yourself. I used to do that. I'd get so upset and stressed out over, <clears throat> oh, there's a negative thought. And then I would get wound up about it and worry about that. Did I just mess it up? It happens. Just start noticing it. Know that you can notice it and not let it ruin your day and not <clears throat> let you get upset. You can notice the thoughts, the fear, maybe moments of fear or doubt. Okay, there's that. Let me remind myself of who I really am. Let me remind myself of that wish that I've already fulfilled in imagination. Don't try to drown out the doubtful thoughts by covering your ears or getting upset about it. Notice it and get back into that feeling that you've already brought up within you, that it's done. And it gets easier. The doubts start falling away. And then you start noticing one day when you're really aware of what's going on, you're paying attention to your mental conversations and constantly moving in imagination, in prayer, you're constantly moving into just to want, you know, oh, I want to experience that. Oh, I want to do that. What, it is, what is it you want to experience? How would I feel if I'm experiencing that, if I was already that, already experiencing that? It really is, it, I say it's simple. I always say how simple it is. But I know it seems like it's not easy. Believe me, I know. Something can be simple and not necessarily be easy. The steps are simple, but you don't have to, you can imagine and assume that this isn't difficult at all, that you don't have to reprogram your subconscious or dig through your past and root out 
you know, generational causes for your problems or for your blockages. Why? Don't do that. Don't. If something comes up, then notice it. Notice where that's coming from, the fear or the doubt. You don't have anything to reprogram if you're continually noticing, being aware of your mental conversations, your inner talk. Has your world, the way you see the world changed, the way you interact with people, the way the mental conversations you have with people are at people when you're thinking about them? If you were this already this person that you want to be, if you're already that and you truly are believing that you are that, how would you treat people? Would those people, would you treat them the same? Would you even be hanging out with the same people? Going to the same places or subscribing to the same websites and Facebook groups? Would you still be digging in online in, in groups like what I'm talking about, looking for a new technique? Not if you were really that person that you want to be. If you really had that, if you were wealthy or healthy, would you still be seeking it, the remedy, the solution to whatever it is that you saw as a, as a problem or as an unfulfilled desire? No, but you can build on that. Oh, I've, you know, you can start wondering and exploring this new state. What else would I want to, what else do I want to experience as this new person? That's cool. Start exploring that. And because as you explore it, you're focusing on that new state. Instead of dwelling on the old man, the old conversation, bury that old guy, drop the old conversation because you're not in that state of mind anymore. You've moved. It's the speech of fulfilled desire. All right, guys, thanks for listening. This is Feeling Twisty.